All right. Good evening, everyone. For, I guess, the past three years or so, America has really been flooding the gates. But I mean, it's, of course, been happening a long time before then. But I think the people, and this is why a state like Florida has put out legislation within an act talking about stop wokeness, right? I see people Twitter handle in wokeness now. And they hate the fact that the people are waking up, mostly black people, right? Because we use the term woke back in the late 70s, early 80s. And people are being afraid that we are now becoming conscious of our situation. We're becoming conscious of the things that other people who are not citizens, who was not born on this land, actually have. America has become all access to everybody except for those who build it. That is the message here today, family. That is what I want you to take away from this video. Because when you look at the when you look at foundational black Americans, U.S. freedmen, high militant who built the very fabric and foundation of this country, and you see the right on paper and quote unquote privileges that we may have in this country as citizens, you realize that anybody comes over here, except for us or people who may have the same likeness as us, do not have the same privileges or rights that we don't even have. Now, family, first and foremost, let me just go right to this before I show my little video, Al Shopton. But this is something I want to share with you guys. This story came out stating that the U.S. paid Haiti to take back their migrants, to take back their uh, immigrants. They had over 13,000 immigrants in one of the southern borders of Texas, right? And it's funny because Biden denies that he paid the Haitian government to take back their immigrants. And why, why would this be a big thing? Because he has paid no other government to take back their immigrants, like Venezuela or Guatemala or Cuba or, or, or Mexico. None of these. They, they have paid none of these other countries millions of dollars to say, oh, we're going to help with your asylum seekers. Because if that was the case, family, you guys remember this? Tell me if you remember this. In southern Mexico, a seemingly endless stream of people making their way on foot towards the United States. Men, women, and children walking through pouring rain and sweltering heat. They come from across Latin America, places like Venezuela, Cuba, so, and Colombia. here's Col the thing. Some of you are probably asking yourself, wow, thousands of these people, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who are literally walking through rainforests and jungles to get to America. And most of you are going to come up with a conclusion, oh, for opportunities, for jobs. Now, here's my thing, family. America has a foreign spending budget where we actually give millions and billions of dollars to other countries. So here's my thing. If you have a natural export, like let's just take, for instance, uh, because they're in Central America, that one of their largest um, natural exports is mangoes and bananas. Then the money that we give to these countries to subsidize them in a manner, why don't we help them build their infrastructure so they can start being an economic powerhouse like America? Well, it's kind of similar to the same thing we're kind of doing with China, with the embargoes, with the tariffs and all these things, because we do not want China to be more powerful than us. My only question is, it's almost like we're in a race and we're both training, right? We're training for the big race. We're at the Olympics, America against uh, Panama, right? And we're trying to be the best. So instead of us being on the same starting line, and us, and us racing into who wins naturally. I almost feel like America want to chop the legs off other countries that has the potential to compete with them in the global market, the global economic market. Because here's the thing. Eventually, America will become overran. Eventually, America will become overran if we continue... Uh, this same sort of behavior of allowing anyone in the country, 
right? And I don't mean them becoming citizens. I don't. I don't. I don't want you guys to get confused with me stating that they're coming over legally. I'm not stating those. I'm talking about illegally. America is one of the only countries in the world. I can't really name any others. Does this allow people who who are illegally in the country to receive all the rights of the people who are citizens of the country? And believe me, family, I have combed through the Constitution. It's a nothing burger. I, I really thought that the Constitution would upheld the benefits and rights and privileges that you have as a natural born or naturalized citizen of these United States of America. That's what I really thought. That's what I really thought. But let me tell you, family, you would think that all these countries are destitute and poverty stricken. What if I tell you that people are coming over here for different reasons? What if I told you that some of these migrants who may not be doing particularly bad in their countries financially, they're coming over here for different reasons? I wonder why. I wonder what it is. All with the same goal, immigration to the U.S. We left Colombia because of the homophobia. We both got physically and verbally attacked. We had to cross the Darien jungle and trails through many xenophobic countries. It's the latest and one of the... Family. Immigrants from all these countries, not just Latin countries, Caribbean countries, African countries, Asian countries. They're not just coming over here for opportunity. They're coming over here for the exact freedoms that we Americans have fought and blighted to essentially have. They just stated that the reason why they're coming is to be homosexual in America. That's what they say. Like, we, we fear for our lives because we love each other. And, of course, we're LGBTQ. So, rather us sneak around in our own country because it's against their laws, I'm just going to go to America. But let me tell you something, family. Believe it or not, I just realized that a lot of this started by the federal government, right? We want to kind of like isolate this to states. But no, the federal government started this when we were trying to get an influx of troops, but we had all these immigrants here and we encouraged the immigrants who were illegally here, who were undocumented in some regards to join the military. Now the states are following suit. The largest migrant caravans to make the nearly 2,000 mile trek north through Mexico. The group's journey began Monday in the city of Tapachula. Organizers claim there are nearly 15,000 migrants in the caravan, but authorities in Mexico estimate it's closer to 5,000. Robinson Reyes is making the desperate my, journey and says the current policy. You know, some of you may think that I'm against people trying to live a better life here in America. I'm not. But as you stated that this guy was actually marching through the streets, he's talking about Colombia. He's in Mexico, but he's coming to America. And here's my thing. I don't want to get in trouble, but I, I can't understand it. If your country's so great... That's all I got to say. And here's my thing. I can understand you're missing your country. You're missing your, because you, there are some things about certain countries that are unique. I can understand you're missing that. I can understand you're missing your family, but you're literally in a hundred thousand people caravan marching from Colombia, Guatemala, all these Southern Central American countries on your way to America. You should be saying America. Y'all may disagree. You guys may disagree. Let me know in the chat. But let me show you something, family. <laughs> this is all Access America. Your, your, the rights that you thought you had as a citizen is now for everybody else. It does not matter. If you, if you step foot on America, 
You have every right privilege than the American citizens do. And in some cases, you might even have more. Oh, yeah. You might even have more uh, uh, benefits of being a non-citizen in America than actual citizens. Well, let's get into it. So I know you've heard about undocumented, quote, illegal immigrants being afforded the right of driver's license. Now, this came out, I think, here in the past two weeks by the way of Minnesota, but it's already been out. The problem is we, the people, meaning the citizens of the United States of America, those who were born here and those who were naturalized here legally, Right. Well, it states here that California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, Virginia and Washington state issue a license if the applicant provides certain documentation, such as a foreign birth certificate, foreign passport consular card and evidence of current residency in the state family <laughs> family these states are allowing non-citizens to obtain driver's license you know with a driver's license family you can pretty much create a whole new identity you can create a whole new identity we don't know if some of these people and i know you guys are going to think i'm talking conspiracy theories no i'm not we don't know if some of these people can be deep state agents of another country. We don't know. We don't know. Right. But they're, they're, you creating a new identity um, also helps you to create a new stream of credit where you can start a business. There's a lot of privileges that come along with driver's license and we're giving them away to illegal, undocumented immigrants. That's what we're doing. And let me just read this to you very quickly, family. Because I read this and it was so important and it took me on a journey. States issue driver's license under the constitutional authority of the 10th Amendment. Congress enacted Real ID in 2005. And I know you guys have been seeing that from your airport. You're going to need to have a Real ID. Um, in the state of Texas, there's a star in the right hand corner of the uh, identification card to let you know it's a Real ID. FYI. It states that this brief provides a summary of state legislation authorizes driver's license or authorization cards for unauthorized immigrants. Family, do you see that? They're stating that the, <laughs> I'm up here trying to highlight the wrong thing. Unauthorized immigrants, family, they mean illegally here in America. In 18 states and also the well as District of Columbia, Laws allow unauthorized immigrants to obtain driver's license. It sure does. It says uh, in 2022, Rhode Island became the most recent state to enact legislation extending driver's license and identification cards to those without proof of law of presence. So you being a citizen doesn't really mean anything. Let me move on. Let me move on. Here we go. Tuition for undocumented immigrant students. Did you know this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ross. They got um, international exchange students. No, 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 no. They said immigrants, not exchange students. <laughs> A growing number of states, including California, Colorado, seem like the, the same perpetrators here, family. Maryland, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, Virginia, Washington State, and the District of Columbia offer state, listen to this. Now, family, why is this important? Let me scroll up. Undocumented immigrants, meaning illegal aliens, illegal immigrants, right? Going to college in America, right? Not a citizen. You're probably fine. They pay the money, Ross. No big deal. Okay. No big deal, huh? Okay. Are you, if you guys are following me here, it states that it offers state financial aid to students who meet certain criteria regardless of their immigration status. Who do you think your tax dollars are going to? If you're in any of these states, your tax dollars are going to 
illegal immigrants to go to school in this country for free where your son and your daughter and even yourself and extended family members cannot go to school in this country for free without giving up something just like in the military you give up your blood sweat and tears you go to school for free but you paid for it some of you may be under the poverty line and they subsidize um some of your financial aid but you have to pay something on that particular loan but Illegal immigrants can come over here and get financial aid illegally, illegal, illegal, illegal. I stop playing games. I stop staying undocumented immigrants. No, they're illegally here. That's just the truth. If I was in a bank, <laughs> if I was in a bank um, after hours and I didn't work at the bank, I didn't have lawful access to the bank or any of those things. They will say that I'm what? Trespassing, a breaking and entering. All of those things will come up, family. But we kind of like put icing on the cake with this thing. Oh, you have the undocumented workers. We're going to style allow them to use state funds so they can have a better education. Wait a minute. What about the American citizens that work their ass off each and every day uh, trying to provide for their families? You can hardly get any bit of financial aid. And why is that money going to people who are not citizens of the country? <sighs> Family, I'm not hating. I'm just having you guys to understand this economy and dynamic of America and the construct where if you are not understanding if you're not familiar with a lot of things that go on in this country then what's going to happen is they're going to continue and you're going to wonder why you're living in the condition that you're currently living in that's why that's why family you're going to keep wondering why you live in the condition that you currently live in because this takes a cake for me. When you are allowed them to get driver's license, right? Illegal immigrants, right? Some of you may want to nicen it up and say undocumented. Okay. So now they can drive around United States of America. Probably, you know, they probably learned to go to driving school. I don't know. Get their license. <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy the freedoms that you have as a citizen. And here's the thing, what is the purpose of being a citizen of the United States of America anymore? You know what, I kinda wanna like undocumentize myself or give up my US citizenship, go to another country, then come back as an immigrant. <laughs> my family can probably go to school for free. I might get free housing. Like if I went to New York, they was giving immigrants $2,000. I wanted the privileges that I could essentially have of being an illegal immigrant, undocumented immigrant. I wonder, I should maybe go to an African country, right? You got to go to Africa or Caribbean. Down for some reason, they don't like Haitians. They're like, no, 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 we don't like Haitians. We sent 13,000 of you back and we gave your country over $5 million to take you back. <laughs> so probably uh, Ghana, yeah, you know, being a Ghanaian citizen, give up my U.S. passport and come over here as an immigrant, get some uh, free immigration money and build a business. Who knows? I'm just I'm just saying um, all access America. Everybody can have some except the American citizen, especially those that are highly melanated like myself. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Uh oh, I said this before. Right. And I just kind of pointed out this story, family of. Think about this. I want you guys to think about this. As an illegal immigrant, <laughs> you can go to school for free. You can get your driver's license so you can create a, who, a whole new identity, a new line of credit, probably starting around 650, 700, so you can buy anything essentially on credit as you want. Then you can probably take all that shit back to your country and chill. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, hold on, hold on. Stay with me. Then you can come over here and <laughs> listen to this. This is wild. This is wild. Can enforce the citizens of that country. 
illegal immigrants, undocumented workers, non-citizens. Okay, this is some conjecture. I won't say illegal immigrants, but I'll say non-citizens. Okay, this to be close to 100% accurate as I can be. Non-citizens can come over and enforce the laws of America. Think about that. Think about that. You're not even a citizen of this nation and you can enforce the laws of this nation within your prospective states. Think about that. I just got this on the screen very quickly, got this highlighted some places, right? It states here that the city of North Las Vegas is spearheading a proposal that would allow non-U.S. citizens that live and work in Nevada to patrol the streets to enforce the law. They state that over 140,000 people who are residents of Nevada are non-citizens, family. Are non-citizens. Yep. All access to America, one, come one, come all. But there's other perpetrators. Oh, yeah. You have Hawaii to Vermont. Listen, it is a whole rich range. It says most agencies in the country require officers or deputies to be U.S. citizens, but some are allowing immigrants who are legally <laughs> in the country to wear the badge. So you're a non-citizen, but you can actually enforce the law in America. We're looking at Nashville, so that's Tennessee, right? They have a lot of they have a lot of states on here, family. Chicago, Hawaii, right? Allow any immigrant with a work authorization from U.S. citizenship and immigration service to become an officer. Family, where is the security in that? Where is the security? They anyone who has a work authorization or a work visa, which doesn't. It doesn't have the same process of a background check of you becoming a citizen. It does not. It does not. You're like, oh, I come over here, I do drywall. Oh, okay, yeah, let me, well, I don't see nothing in the system. Yeah, because your system probably doesn't even reach their criminal uh, uh, system within their prospective countries. You, you don't have access to that. Oh, yeah. we, don't, we haven't seen you do do anything in America. Yeah, it's this first day in America. Stay with me, family. Los Angeles County, Cincinnati's. So that's Ohio, right? Officers, listen to this. Officers at least have a pending citizenship application on file with the federal government. Now, and I've said this before. Have any of you guys submitted an application, um, waited a couple of months or whatever, then didn't get approved for whatever it was, right? So they're saying, hey, you got a pending citizenship application, then yeah, you can be a police officer with Ohio and Los Angeles, a.k.a. California. Yeah, this, as long as it's pending. As long as it's pending, it's okay. Yeah, we, we don't know if you're going to get it approved. We don't know if you 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 with El Chapo. We don't know if you part of... We don't know. But if it's pending, you're good with us. All access America. Come one, come all. Listen, I'm, a, I'm putting out the white flag. I give up. I give up. We should put out a bolo on all the other countries in the world, except the Western ones, right? Because they're not coming over here in droves because... They're the ones who oppress the entire world, by the way. And that's why now people are showing up on everybody's doorstep. That's majority white. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But they should put out a bolo and say that every country that's come to America. Yeah, give us your tired. Uh-oh. Give us your hungry. Give us your poor. And we'll make sure they're okay. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. The whole Statue of Liberty uh, uh, speech. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. You know, everybody come over here. Wait a minute, hold on. Except you goddamn Haitians. We sending you back. That's what that that's what happened, family. I'm not making it up. They sent them back. Oh yeah, they sent them back. Some people are like, oh yeah, Texas, Texas. No, I don't know. I don't know, family. It says the US. BBC didn't say Texas. <laughs> it said that where the migrants were. They said, no, we're going to send those Haitians back to Haiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got too many black people as it is. 
We got the Nigerians. We got the Black Americans. We got the Ethiopians. Oh no, 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 no. We got too many. We got too many Black people in America. We don't know if they're going to be our coons and sambos, or they're going to be on team anti-white supremacy. We don't know. We don't. We don't know if they're going to join the Black Empowerment Movement. We don't know this. We have to send them back. We have to, right? And a lot of people think, you know, this was uh, Texas funded. Says United States flies. And maybe BBC is stretching a little bit, but that's okay. About 13,000 will be immigrants have gathered under a bridge connecting Del Rio and Texas to Mexico's Okuna. Don't know how to pronounce it that much. But anyway, it says an emergency U.S. public health order known as Title 42 allows authorities to expel most migrants before they can claim asylum. Family, this is how they do the black people, right? They say we have a title, Title 42. They didn't do this for Mexicans. They didn't do this for Guatemalans. They didn't do this for Cubans. They didn't do this for uh, uh, Colombians. They didn't do this for Costa Ricans. They didn't do this for Asians. They didn't do this for the Afghans. They didn't do this for nobody except those dark-skinned black folk from the island of Haiti. Their side. Not the other side. That's what they did, family. That's what they did. They're like, yeah, we, you know what? Uh, we got a title with some money in it. Title 42 allows us just to get rid of all you black folk and you go back to Haiti. So Haiti was like, hey, we, you know, we're destitute over here. We have uh, uh, earthquakes. We had the French oppressors and suppressors, even to a certain degree. Uh, we feel as though that some entities within inside of the United States of America came and assassinated our president. Oh, man, there's so much going on. We, we can't accept those guys back. What if I gave you around $5 million? Oh, $5 million, you say? Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, send them back. How many is it again? 13000 I was thinking more like ten. Thirteen thousand, it is then five million. Put in my bank account. Yeah, family. You think I'm playing games here? It's serious. This is all Access America. Before I continue on, I see Red Wine Entertainment in the room. How you doing, sister? Thank you for moderating. Armageddon, Wendell. I see all you guys in here. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Let's see, Armageddon. American citizens is being sacrificed at the altar and being replaced by immigrants. I believe that American powers that be are under blackmail obligation via foreign debt owed to their countries. It's a possibility. It also states so pay off the debt. They are important immigrants. Is a trade off to compensate for the debt owed to other countries. Also, taxes and hyperinflation is a hidden tax being used to fund the agenda. Absolutely, family. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Let me get rid of this. I'm sorry. Here we go. How do you think that the government is funded? Now, someone told me, or rather we was having a discussion and I was blown away. I was blown away. I was like, what? I said, yeah, we shouldn't pay taxes because of blah, blah, blah. Now, nobody likes taxes, right? But here's the thing. Nobody likes taxes, but without taxes, you don't have a government. You don't have a country. You don't. There's no law. There is no order. If all the American people stated, you know what? I'm no longer paying taxes. All of this shit will come down. The, yes, the, the very fabric of America will come down. And what people will start to do is start to make these smaller governments. See, people seek law and order. People like a system that, op that they can uh, uh, essentially operate within for their own well-being. This thing... If you looked at the show like The Last of Us, that's out, uh, 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 The Walking Dead, all these uh, shows showing you post-apocalyptic America, right, where there's no governments in place. When they go to all these different segments and sets, what do you see? You see small governments. Like, this is our group, but I'm the leader. And they go out on missions and things of that manner, right? Sometimes they are uh, being um, ambassadors. They go to another compound where they see like-minded people and like, you know, we can probably trade from one another. Remember the, remember the Walking Dead? I don't know if you guys watched that show, but that's what I'm explaining. Anytime there has been, okay, the book of Eli. Remember what Denzel Washington, 
he, he was blind. He came upon that city. That one guy was ahead. He had his general or whoever, his henchmen. But they had, but there was a president. There was a, a, a board, so to speak. We seek construction. We seek structure. That's what human beings actually seek. We, it's okay. we, we like the fact that we operate within a system. We do. We like the fact that we operate within a system. And that's why you have all of these countries, all of these governments, all of these laws, et cetera. But the one thing I did not know, family, is that the Constitution was never well written. It's a lot of loopholes in the Constitution. Do we need a Constitution? Absolutely. But it needs to be rewritten, revamped, revitalized, uh, rejuvenated. <laughs> whatever you want to put a re on it, that's what needs to happen with the Constitution. Because I started going to studying, like, how are these states allowed to have non-immigrants, excuse me, non-citizens, illegal immigrants with all of these rights and privileges using our tax dollars? How? Because here's the thing, family, in order for your city, your state to have a DMV, how do you think that DMV funds the people who work for that DMV? You think that your little $13, $15, $20, maybe $25 you pay for your driver's license operates that entire billion and pays all those people's paycheck? No, it's the state dollars. If you don't have state tax, then it's a sale tax. If it's not sale tax, it's a property tax. You're paying, excuse me, you're paying a particular tax in order to fund those state and local ran entities like a DMV or your, your local water filtration system that is being ran by your tax dollars. But right here in the Constitution, the 10th Amendment, it states, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. It's kind of like saying, well, you know, the Constitution didn't mention it. Well, states, you got four rights under the law to do whatever you want. And family, uh, I don't know what to do because bear arms, police officers, they have guns. And the Constitution says the right of the people to keep and bear arms. And you're like me, right? You're stating, well, the people are the citizens. No, I went to all these websites to figure out when the constitution is mentioning the people, does that mean the citizens? And those websites say, if they didn't mention citizens, then they're not talking about citizens. They're talking about anybody who resides, anybody who's standing on American soil. This is a misconception right here, family. I'm right here at the top. Let me just highlight this whole thing really quickly. Blow it up for you guys. The misconception is that the United States Constitution applies to only U.S. citizens. Some passages and phrases in our laws explicitly state only citizens are afforded certain rights, such as the right to vote. When the terms resident or person is used instead of citizen, the rights and privileges afforded are extended to protect citizens and non-citizens alike. Moreover, protections under the 14th Amendment ensure that no particular group is discriminated against unlawfully. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. The only right that you have as a citizen is to vote. Because, <laughs> you know, listen, I'm going to go back to the right to bear arms. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, though prohibited by the states, are reserved to the states respectfully. Excuse me, wrong one. Wrong one. Here we go. This is it. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. The right of the people. The right of the people. The right of the people in the states right here. When the terms resident or person is used instead of citizen, the rights and privileges are afforded and extended to citizens and non-citizens alike. So that means I was wrong the other day when I did my video that under the Constitution, 
undocumented, illegal, non-citizen immigrants can bear arms. They can have a weapon. Now, listen to this. Now, this is coming from the Constitution. This is from Senate.gov. It says, all persons, I'm not even showing it, am I? <laughs> My apologies, family. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges of immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the laws. Of the laws, family. So... As I was going through this whole passage, family, let me tell you the one thing I found out that you as citizens have a privilege over undocumented, illegal, non-citizens. Vote. You can vote. The right of citizens of the United States to vote should not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous conditions of servitude. You can vote. You can vote. You can vote. You can vote. That's all you can do. You can't do anything as a citizen in America um, than a non-citizen other than vote. This is all access to America. Come one, come all. Give us your tired, your hungry, and your poor. We'll, we'll pick them up by their bootstraps. We'll give them programs like DACA. We'll let them use Medicaid. We'll let them use programs like TAF, T-A-N-F. Look it up, family. There's a lot of federal programs out there for illegal immigrants and non-citizens. But these same programs that was once awarded to low impoverished people of America, they have been essentially wiped away. That is why the homelessness in America has increased about four times the amount that it was five or six years ago. That's why you had these tent cities everywhere. Uh, yeah, they popularized California and Washington State because uh, they're very expensive to live. But my hometown, D.C., we have a lot of homeless people. And here's the thing that share the same skin complexion. The majority of the people I see homeless are black people. I had a discussion in a gym today and it was white, black and Indian folk in there, East Indian. And we were talking about colorism and racism. And I can't believe I was having this in the gym, but nonetheless, it was a great conversation because they suffer from, <laughs> I'm not going to say they suffer from oppression, suppression, but they have a great deal of colorism in India, right? Did you guys see my last video or one of my last videos? where I interview the author and activist who wrote The Black Rose, Shweta Agra, from India. She actually lives in the UK. You guys should check that video out. But family, I, I mean, it, it almost benefits us to go and relinquish our American citizenship and come over here as an immigrant. Here's another question. There is no federal law that prohibits the admission of undocumented immigrants to the U.S., colleges, public, or private, right? Again, not only are illegal immigrants and undocumented immigrants using financial aid, your tax dollars, to go to school, there is no law that stops them from doing it. And the reason what I pointed out, Texas, because when you think about those red states, those conservative states, they oh, build the border, send them back home, fly them back to Haiti. You're like, they, they, they definitely don't have any programs on a state level in states like Georgia, Texas, and Florida. They in Alabama, they don't have any wait a minute. Texas has HB 1403 that allows undocumented students to receive Texas state aid through a form called TASFA. 
And I guarantee one of your states have something similar. Now, the reason why this is important, family, because in, in your city, you have uh, ran down government state buildings that needs to be updated with the latest technology and renovated. You have potholes in your streets. Um, you have failing infrastructure issues. There is so much going on in your state. And then you see your state giving money to people who are not freaking residents or citizens. They are illegal in the country. How evil is that to the people who are working their asses off, paying all these freaking taxes and not being able to benefit from them? They say, you know what? We know you over here illegally. We're not going to expel you back to your country under Title 42 like we did the Haitians. Rather that, we're going to allow you to go to school, even though a lot of American citizen kids cannot afford to go to college. Damn their trade school. But we're going to allow you to do it with their tax dollars. It's programs like this, even in red states. That's why I tell you, it's probably safe for most people, and this is my opinion, to stay apolitical. Because it don't matter if it's the left or the right, the liberal or the conservative or the Democrat or Republican. It doesn't really matter. As you can tell right here, family, a state like Texas is giving financial aid to illegal immigrants, quote, undocumented students. I'm not making this up, family. It's right here. It's right here. I see I got JV informant. What's going on, brother? How you doing? They're giving, they're, giving, they're giving America away in a handbasket, family. They're giving America away in a handbasket. They say, hey, just, just come and take it. Just come and take it. Listen to this. I didn't really highlight anything, but I just threw in a question inside the Google machine, and I said, what are the rights of a U.S. citizen after naturalization? You cannot be deported. <laughs> Y'all see that? You cannot be deported to your country. It doesn't matter. We're letting them in anyway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Come on in. The gates are open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Better opportunity, better way of living. Oh, yeah. Standard of living is higher. Yeah. It says you cannot be deported to your country. Well, if you deport me to my country, I'm coming right back. It says... You can travel with one of the most powerful passports in the world. Why well, need a passport? Just walk on in. <laughs> Shit. Or fly in or swim in. It don't matter. You can obtain federal benefits available to U.S. citizens. Well, we kind of went over that, family. We know most of the federal benefits are going to non-citizens. It says your children automatically become U.S. citizens. Yes, when you come across the border illegally and they're born in the United States, they are citizens. You are right. And here's the only one thing that stays true. You can vote in any U.S. election. That's it. That's your rights as a citizen. That's your right as a citizen. I'm just stating, family. And here's, here's the thing at the end of the day. To me, the citizen... We can kind of toy around with that for a while, but at the end of the day, it's the amount of money that these non-citizens, undocumented programs have that's coming directly from the American people on a state and federal level. That's the problem. But they don't afford American citizens that same benefit and funds. Right? You ever been to New York? There's Places in New York is really pristine, and then there's places in New York that are shitholes. But they got all those non documented illegal immigrants there. And then, if you guys recall, they were giving the Afghans $2,000 to assist them on their way, essentially. Under the law, undocumented immigrants, undocumented immigrants may only access federal benefits that are deemed necessary to protect life or guarantee safety in dire situations such as emergency Medicaid, access or, uh, excuse me, to treatment in hospital emergency rooms or access to health care and nutrition programs under the special supplement nutrition. Now, family, here's my question. If you are an illegal immigrant in the country 
and you get sick, you get hurt, you get injured, and you go to the hospital and they have to render aid, where does the bill go? Let me ask it again. Where does the bill go? Because if I'm a illegal immigrant, I, when my Vietnamese, uh, Chinese, uh, 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 Hispanic, Latino, Haitian, Caribbean, African, it doesn't matter. I can just pretend like I don't speak the language. That I can't, can somebody, anyone knows his language? He's from a small village. He could be speaking gibberish. He can be like, oh, that'll go, but they got that go guy. He could just be speaking gibberish, right? Because he knows somebody probably knows French. Somebody uh, uh, probably knows English. Somebody probably knows Spanish. So let me just speak gibberish. Where, where are you from? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know. He's speaking gibberish. Remember on Sims, when you guys used to build the cities on Sims? And Sims, they just be speaking gibberish. Yeah, Sims, right? So he's like, and then they patch him all up, give him what he need. He heads out, no bill, because they like, we don't even know what to do with that one. He's like, yeah, man, that's a good health care. <laughs> but family, I remember back in the day, Southeast D.C., it was only like one hospital that would take you if you didn't have insurance because it was what? State funded. It was called, I think it was called, it was a general hospital. <laughs> and if anyone who's from Washington, D.C., I was born at Southeast Community Hospital. Think about that. A uh, hospital had community on it. So, you know, it was um, in a black neighborhood, of course, and they probably didn't have the best funding. But nonetheless, I'm still here today. They did a wonderful job. But family, that is what I'm talking about. Where do you think that money's coming from? It's coming from you. It's coming from you. It's coming from you. But that's why I'm talking about All Access America because undocumented, illegal non-citizens have the same rights as you. They're going to be law enforcement agencies. They can get their driver's license. They have federally and state funded programs. They can go to school on financial aid because here's the thing, the same thing they have for students on that state level that I showed you with Texas, they have the same thing on the federal level. So essentially they can get both financial aids on the both federal and state law and go to school absolutely free where you yourself is still paying off student loans. You, your daughter, your sister, your brother, your, your son, all of them may have student loans because they went to college. But they can come for free. But if you're talking to any immigrant, don't matter where they're from, everybody got the same story. I came here with a couple of dollars in my pocket. My dad came here with six cents and he pulled himself up by his bootstrap. Why you black Americans can't do it either? Lies. That's why. Ain't nobody come here with a couple of dollars in their pocket and then all of a sudden got a million dollar business a year. All of a sudden had their own business and own home in a couple of years. You're a damn lie. You had help. Oh, well, my countrymen that, who were already over here, when they was over here, what did they receive? Some of them either one came with money or two, who you think assisted them to the position that they are today. And where did that support come from? It come from the bloodshed and tears and, and the support of black Americans marching, dying, and fighting for civil and equal rights for everybody, I guess. But no, 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 no. You pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. You came over here with a couple of dollars in your pocket, which is a damn lie. As we went over all of these legislation and, and state funded and federal funded for illegal immigrants and non-citizens, you can't tell the American people that you came over here and, and we was living in a box and with the three dollars, he went to a store and bought six cups and then he sold the six cups for four dollars a piece and he did that a couple of hundred more times and he bought a cup shop. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Stop the lies. I'm tired of hearing people not from America. We, we came over here with six dollars in our pocket and stop. Because I can tell you, my family had six dollars in their pocket and they was like, I don't even know how to flip six dollars. I can't even get a dime piece. 
Because everybody know the illegal sale of non-prescription drugs hand to hand is probably the fastest way you become a millionaire in America. But if you only got six dollars, then you're four dollars short. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh man, Armageddon said it appears to me most states is acting like his own country. That's exactly what it is. You know, the federal government is only the hedge of protection when foreign entities come over here and try to destroy America. That's really it. They make all these laws and then these governors are like, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to put this bill. We're going to enact this legislation. They can do whatever they want. Bond faith and trust in a two-party dictatorship. Boy, boy, boy. Double-edged sword. Is it not? <laughs> jiggy, Jiggy. Uh, it says, get the Jiggy with it. It says, make no sense. Absolutely makes no sense. They tell our people to vote while these other groups of people don't even think about voting. And they are getting all the great benefits they never asked for. Absolutely. They just wanted asylum. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. We're not going to only give you asylum. Right in New York, we've given you guys two thousand dollars. We're gonna give you six months free rent. We gotta get you guys on your feet. We gotta make sure we gotta make sure you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, you're gonna give us free two thousand dollars. Yeah, unattained two thousand dollars. You can do whatever you want to do with it. Oh, okay. And you're giving me six months free in an apartment. Well, yeah. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And they like, well, that's not really pulling yourself up by your own bootstrap i mean you gave us the bootstraps i guess we can at least pull them up <laughs> we can at least pull them up you gave them to us right think about that family think about if it was six of you and they gave they gave all of you guys an apartment for six months free rent now if you're smart you would take the $2,000 per individual and concoct a business plan. And then you guys live in one of those apartments. Stack yourself up, right? Hurt a little bit. Be uncomfortable. Sacrifice. And rent out those other apartments for five or six months and make money off it. It's free for you. Say, yeah, man, I, I got a two-bedroom apartment I'm renting out for only six months, only five months. Yeah, man, just give me $500. Right in New York, it's more like give me $1,200. Because the rent is probably anywhere from two thousand on up, so you're making an additional thousand some dollars a month. What can you do with that? Don't forget your Medicare is taken care of. Your your kids are going to school for free, and you're not even a citizen. That's a great come up. So I don't want nobody from another country tell me tells me that they came to this country, their family came to this country with absolutely nothing, and I'm gonna look me in your face and I'm gonna say you a damn lie. Stop telling people that story. I'm tired of that story that all these people came over here with nickels in their pocket and somehow they took these nickels and they multiplied these nickels. Family, you can't even open up a bank account without $50 or something. There's some bank accounts, yeah, we need 50, 100, a couple of hundred dollars. Then we're going, yeah, man, I deposit these two nickels inside a bank account. Then a hundred years later, I was rich. Wait a minute. You lived that long? You still here? Uh, you know, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps, though. Stop it. Wendell says they moved the goalposts to use the Constitution to bring in non-citizens. Absolutely every single time. Let me see what you guys are saying here. <laughs> what's, going, what's going on, guys? City talking. Uh, our people can't compete with incentivized government grants given to other groups. Thank you. I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you very much, Armageddon. Thank you very much. Because, you know, I had to look up this very quickly. New York included undocumented immigrants in the pandemic aid and $290,000 workers will benefit, right? How much you think New York gave out, right? You probably think a couple of million. couple million right maybe a hundred million right nah 2.1 billion anybody ever been to new york raise your hand in the chat raise your hand if you ever been to new york new york 
has a grotesquely large amount of homeless people, just like California, if not more. But do they take that $2 billion and renovate the infrastructure? All of these large cities, they always have like lead in their water, asbestos, I don't know, family, some sort of a contaminant in their water, right? But no. Uh, we got to cover everybody in America because we got these immigrants here. We know they're illegal, but hey, they got to get COVID. And I got it. Did the best for what the people around it because COVID was spreading. I got it. But family, it just amazes me how all of these governments come up with all this money all of a sudden. They can just shit money. Like, yep, here's a billion. Where was it before when all of the people in these low impoverished areas were saying our water is bad? Did you guys know that Flint, Michigan's water is bad? That Jackson's water is bad? Like all these predominantly black cities' water are bad and they don't have the money to go in and rebuild and fix it. Because essentially, and I've said this before, there's uh, chemicals out there which are called forever chemicals, right? And some of them are not dilutable by water. So if there's a case where there's a high contamination of chemicals, lead, whatever, within a facility, then guess what? They have to gut that facility, right? They can uh, try to be cheap and put a part here, put a part there. It's kind of like if you had a vehicle and it's like, well, you know, you probably need to replace the engine in order for it to work properly. But to kind of get you through the day, just change out your pistons. So that, you know, let's change out a couple of parts. No. They need to gut that facility and replace all the parts because I'm looking at all the money that these states have for everything and everybody else except for the natural born people who built it. Got to be more careful. I'm just telling like it is today, family. Yup, the hats are off. Yup. Wait a minute. Why does why does this look why does this look mildly racist when I think about Haitians? Why do I feel like this discrimination all over my body right now? When I read this, tens of thousands of Afghans have resettled across the U.S. now. The challenge is making a home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. So, okay. All right. You let them. Okay. And we kind of knew this already, family. I covered this before. They allow them to make a home here now the challenges for them because it's such a different culture like hey they look look here's your house welcome to america here's your house you know what we're gonna do the afghans like we did the italians like we did the irish just go out there in the, the great yonder and put down a flag and that's your land Oh, wait a minute. We're not doing that no more. Okay, then, hey, let's just give them a house. Bring your bags. Oh, you flew over here? It wasn't first class? Okay, we're going to talk about that. Now, let me ask you, the people you got over here with you, are are any of them part of the Taliban? Huh? Because, you know, the Taliban took over Afghanistan. They they now the new government. The Taliban took over. But, but how do we know that there is no Taliban I'm just asking questions. I'm, I'm not implying anything. I'm asking, how do we know that there's no Taliban within the Afghani refugees? Because the only thing I had to do is not carry an AK and run in the crowd and get on a plane. Oh, no, no, no. They, get, they got names. They got this. They got that. They do? Okay. They call me Khalif Muhammad. Oh, okay, Khalif. Get on a plane. And I'm not stating that these nice people here are terrorists. I'm not saying nothing like that. I'm just saying, how do we know? How do we know that MS-13 and other uh, very uh, uh, dangerous Latin gangs um, are not coming across the border for one? And I just use MS-13 as a example, okay? But all these people from all these different countries not bringing their junk and their degeneracy into America. How do we know that? Well, give it around three years, family. When these police officers really are on the beat, they're really on the streets. Let's see who they mostly attack. Let's see who they mostly affect. Not being citizens. 
not being citizens. Oh, yeah, Armageddon, you're going to have a lot of non-citizens as law enforcement agencies. You're going to have a lot of non-citizens, okay, as law enforcement agents. Now, last but not least, you ever had respect for somebody and then when you realize what they were all about, you totally lost it. And I'll just be real. I lost so much respect for Al Sharpton. When I was in my early 20s, I didn't know any better. I thought he was a black leader. I thought he was this. I thought he was that. And I just realized he's just an agent. He's just talking. He just making sure he stays fed, living, excuse me, living a good life. But him and Kamala Harris, man. They, 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 they really put a shame on Tyrese Nichols' funeral, and I'm pretty sure they got approval from the family. But they went on there with a political agenda and self-pleasing tactics. Like Al Sharpton went on to Tyrese Nichols' funeral in Memphis, Tennessee, and he was just verbally masturbating himself. Yeah, he was just masturbating all over the place, getting on his high horse. It was just despicable family. Oh, my gosh. That's why I'm still marching. Yeah. Yes, I got books out. Yes, I got a TV show, but I'm a mountain climber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for it. A lot of times, family, I know what the video is talking about, but I, I don't see it because I want to have a real reaction on camera. And that was a real reaction. I almost choked because <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, I got books out. I got TV shows out. I climbed the mountain. Who are you talking about? You're at someone's funeral and you're talking about yourself. But, oh, well, you taking it out of context. He was just making a comparison. It's not about him, though. That's the point. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I was sharing it because you got to You guys just got to hear this. Oh, gosh. I get to the top of the mountain. You can call me names on right wing television. I'm a mountain climber. I expect stumbles to come my family. Did you guys hear it? Hold on. Get family. Did you guys hear it? He said, I'm a mountain climber. I don't care how you show me on right wing television. Family, as I told you, this is a self-pleasing political agenda that him and Kamala Harris and this totally uh, ashamed the funeral of Tyree Nichols. It was nothing about Tyree Nichols. I don't even think Al Sharpton said the man's name. And I, I'm just going to rewind it for the people who are just joining. I'm just going to rewind it because you got to hear it. You got to hear it. This, this is so disrespectful to the Tyree Nichols family. And they probably, once they, you know, come down a little bit from grieving, understand that this wasn't about their son. This was about a political agenda. This was possibly about re-election for Joe Biden. They're going to use the death of this black man. And the only thing he can come up with is let me talk about Al Sharpton. That's why I'm still marching. Yeah. Yes, I got books out. Yes, I got a TV show, but I'm a mountain climber. <laughs> I'm not going to stop till I get to the top of the mountain. You can call me names on right wing television. I'm a mountain. You can call me names on right wing television. I'm a mountain climber. Stop. Climber. I expect stumbles to come my way. I'm a mountain climber. You can disgrace me. You can discredit me. But I'm going to keep on climbing. I'm going to climb. Until Tyrese Nichols get justice. I'm oh, he gonna said climb it, okay. until Eric Gardner gets justice. I'm gonna climb until we change the laws. We're mountain climbers. We're not day traders. We're mountain climbers.
<laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Hold on, family. Let me keep <clears throat> let me keep my level of professionalism. I was wrong. He did say Tyrese Nichols. Then he went right into getting a law passed, political agenda. And then this last thing he said, um, did y'all hear him? Can I can I rewind that for you guys? This a little bit here. You guys gotta hear it again. Climbers, we're not day traders. <laughs> it's almost like he don't want nobody to invest. We we ain't day traders. What traders are you all? We do option trades. Yeah. What are you talking about? We're mountain climbers, and if God be for us, it's more than the whole world against us. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. He's been fooled. When I was hungry, water. When I was thirsty, he's my rock. He's my rock. He's my rock. Okay, so... um. I can't handle no more of it, but I had to show you the guys that because it's this this it's just so disrespectful to Tyrese Nichols and his family. I guess uh figuratively, not literally, Al Shopping is a mountain climber, and that you should not day trade, and he don't care if the right wing television shows talk about him. What else have I learned? You shouldn't day trade because that's just a big thing for me. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What else? What else he said? He said he did like this. <laughs> he was saying, and so, you know, he got books. He got television shows. I know everything about Ob Shopton. I know nothing about Tyree Nichols. I'm just saying. I know I'm stretching it, family. But man, oh, man. Look at the coons in the room. <laughs> I'm getting this stupid. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, man. Oh, Lord. Politics is definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, Red Wine. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. JD Informer says facts. You know they facts, my brother. Come on. Uh, Wendell agreed. Kamala is a useful tool that agrees with the status quo. Use when needed. Absolutely. Well, family, man, that's all I have for you guys this evening. Um, I just want to, man, I want to share one more thing with you guys. Uh, it's been blowing up. Why not? Why not? I've been using it. Okay. I've been using it as a tool for information, but you guys heard of this chat, uh, chat, um, chat, G B T C H A G P T. It's an open AI program that essentially anything that you type in it, right. It can create because it's a, it's a, um, AI language model, right. It can generate, text-based responses that's based on information. Now, the reason why I say this is a game changer for a lot of people, and I don't know who those people are yet, today, <laughs> um, I sent my wife a poem that the open chat GPT wrote for me, right? And I asked it a simple question. Let me see if it's in here, right? Okay, it's not... Sometimes it has a lot of issues because there's always people on it. Okay. There's always people on it. But I told it, I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to show you. Here we go. I told it to write. I said, write me a loving poem for my, for, for my wife, Yolanda, on how she takes care of the family every day. That's what I told it to write, right? It says, oh, Yolanda, heart of gold and grace. You're the anchor of our family place. With gentle hands and loving heart, you keep us all from falling apart. Each day you tend to everyone's needs, cooking meals and fulfilling our greed. With a smile, your ease, our worries away and light up our lives like the break of day. Your tireless work so selfless and true is the reason our home is filled with love so pure. 
You are the glue that holds us all together. And we are so grateful to have you forever. So on this day and every day after, we want to thank you for all that you do, for being the mother, sister, friend we adore and making for our family hold anew. Chat GBT. Chat GBT, you, you, you can ask this thing anything. Let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, uh, how about, what, what about this? I do it live here and it's going to bear some time with me. Let me see. Right a thank you note to my YouTube subscriber, uh-oh, subscriber, Red Wine Entertainment. Okay, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I just messed that up, family, okay? So that's my question. That's what I'm going to tell it to write. Write a thank you note to my YouTube subscriber, Red Wine Entertainment, right? And I'm just pointing this out because this is a powerful tool, right? Very powerful tool. It spits it out in seconds. I might do a video on this where I just ask it different complicated questions. And it's going to do this. Look, look, look. Red Wine Entertainment. I just wanted to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for your support of my YouTube channel. Your unwavering support means the world to me, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of my subscribers, especially you. Your subscription to my channel shows me that you are, appreciate the content I create and that motivates me to keep pushing forward and creating more meaningful and engaging content. I love connecting with my audience and knowing that what I'm doing is resonating with you is truly a rewarding experience. Your support has allowed me to continue doing what I love, and I'm forever grateful. I can't wait to see what the future holds, and I hope to continue to bring you joy and entertainment through my videos. Once again, thank you so much. Your continued support for being an integral part of my YouTube journey. Warm regards, Black Logic. Wow. It sounds like a real person. And here's the thing, family. The questions you ask this thing, a lot of you probably asking what's the, the website. Just type in CHA GPT on Google, and it's usually the first website. And it says open AI for the uh for the um the the, the address for it. But you can I've asked all sorts of questions. It wrote poems. It wrote um, um, an APA format paper, right? It, if you say, watch this, family. This is my last one. I got to go, right? Write me a, or excuse me, write me a paper. Write me a paper in APA format talking uh explaining let's put that i like to be very detailed explain i know i'm, I'm messing up these words because my keyboard is separated you know people don't even know that i work with this when i have my mic here's part of my keyboard here's another part <laughs> but anyway i'm struggling give me a second here write me a paper in apa format explaining let's go with microeconomics watch this family this is life changer I'm not going to I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'm letting you guys know because uh, it has been blowing up. A lot of people know about this, but I know there's still some people out there who live in caves. <laughs> I'm not saying because you don't know you live in a cave, but I'm kind of saying it at the same time. But look how it breaks it down in APA for format. Right. Me and my wife was blown away when we asked this thing this and it wrote paragraph after paragraph of different you know topics in detail. But at the end, there's a catch when it comes to term papers. You're trying to turn it for school. But look at this. Anything you want to know, like I, you don't even have to Google stuff anymore. I just type in the question, explain to me, blah, blah, blah. Look at this family. Here it goes. Here it goes. And I don't know how many pages this is already. This thing is going for it. Conclusion. Here we go. Now, what's funny about this paper is yesterday when we told it to write in APA format, it actually said references and did a references block too. But yeah, very, very powerful tool. Um, I would tell you, family, Turnitin is the platform that colleges, universities, and schools use so people do not plagiarize their papers. 
turn it in somehow i guess have some of the same technology or they have maybe partner with uh chat gpt because they did it i saw a video on youtube where they would use turn it in and a paper was created by the same a open ai and they understood that 50 percent or 100 percent of that paper was written by chat gpt so what are some of the uses that you can use it for i mean uh writing a business plan it will write you a business plan the only thing that you have to understand is when you're telling it to do something or to write something to be as detailed as possible that's the most important thing right because i kind of did a test today and i sent my wife that poem and she said i guess i'm in love with chat gpt because that's what wrote the poem because she's like oh babe thank you for this poem that you've written for me and i was like yeah i i, I didn't write that so ladies <laughs> there's gonna be some smooth talkers they're gonna have chat gpt girl i'm gonna write you a poem oh you so sweet it's gonna be chat gpt shout out to my brother chat gpt but anyway it can write business anything anything written with words that's the best i can explain it right term papers dissertation business plan a presentation to your boss think about that it can write a presentation right like okay say what what if you what if your boss gave you a mission i'm almost done here family what if your boss gave you a mission to find a vendor for i don't know project management right so you would just probably exit write me a presentation i'm gonna be real stupid too write me a presentation to my boss about how monday.com which is a <laughs> i sound silly which is a project manager software Hey, write me a presentation to my boss about how Monday.com, which is a project manager soft software, is beneficial to uh oh to our uh, oh man this this keyboard guys to our business. Y'all think I'm bull crapping? Y'all saw I just made that up. This is off the top of the tip top top of the brain. You're getting real silent in the room, isn't it? <laughs> Y'all like, what in the f is going on? So we talked about this today in the sauna because I was in the sauna for like 45 minutes with Total Stranger. We talked about race and then we talked about Jack GPT. It is wrote a whole presentation to your boss. Look at this. I did it, family. <laughs> oh, D general is stupid. Okay, okay. Last one. Last one. Okay, I'm gonna do a video, guys. You guys got to make sure you hit the subscribe button. You got to make sure you hit the notification bell because when I go live, and you know, guys, I just go live, right? I try to put it out there maybe 30 minutes or a couple of days before, but sometimes I'm just inspired, right? I'm motivated. So make sure you hit your notification bell. Cause I know my girl Red Wine is always here. My buddy uh, Wendell is always here. Jada, Jada, uh, informing you've been slipping, bruh. But anyway, um, a rap song. Okay, here we go. Write a rap song that talks about black empowerment. <laughs> now it may sound like it may sound like kumo d because i don't know the rhythm 
But hold on, family. Rising up from the ashes, history of our past, the struggle and the pain, but we come so far from the change to the street. We made a stand with the power of our voice. We taking the command. Black empowerment is time to shine. From the depths of the oppression, we rise with the fire in our hearts and the strength in our soul. We'll never get up. We got to go. We got a story to tell. A legacy. I mean, I, I can't rap, as you can tell. I'm horrible. But nonetheless, from the kings and the queens to the brave and the bold, we've been through the battles that we've overcome with the power of unity. We rise above black empowerment. It's time to shine. From the depths of the oppression, we rise. I mean... I can see it. We got the power to break these chains with our courage. We conquer the pain from the mountains to the valleys. We rise again with black empowerment. We will win black empowerment. It's time to shine from the depths of the oppression. We rise outro with black empowerment. We will reach the sky from the depths of the oppression. We'll never die with the power of our voice. We'll make it right. And we keep shining with the fire in our eyes. You know what, uh, family? I, 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 uh, you know, some of you may want to take this rap. I'm just going to do it for giggles. I'm doing it for giggles, family. Why not? I copied it. We're going to figure this thing out together, family. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's your rap there, D-General. So, family, that's my time for today. I stayed on a little longer than I wanted to. But I think we had a great time. I think we had a good time. And don't forget the message of the video there. This is now all access America. And if we, the people, meaning the citizens, don't know what's going on, do not understand what's going on, then sooner than later, the rights that we thought we had, it would be like they never existed. You guys have a great and wonderful weekend. And I see you guys on the next one.